Greetings and salutations, my beautiful people, and welcome back to The Month of Terror. Where today I thought I'd present to you my top 10 games personally that got under my skin. Not scariest horror games at all, nothing like that, but just the games that got under my skin, you know, creep me out as it were. Thought it'd be a bit more interesting, scariest horror games is a bit boring if you ask me. Also, yes, my opinion. Look at the title of the video, wherever it is, it's up there or down there, it says MY! Because I, I know you're not stupid, but there are some people that still think that I make these videos for me to spout out their opinion. And it's not! It's mine! Why? And what better place to talk about that than in these hand-dug caverns and caves all done by 1700s famous British politicians who ran a secret prostitution, drinking and devil-worshipping occult group in its inner sanctum? Because I can't think of anywhere better. Welcome to the Hellfire Caves. Yes, that's actually what they're called, where we'll be discussing today's video topic. And... Uh, did you hear that? That is probably nothing. Anyway, and I hope that you brought your biggest pair of nappies today, because I think this video is going to make you... Shit your britches. <laughs> I realized the moment I fell into the fissures that the book would not be destroyed as I had planned. It continued falling into that starry expanse of which I had only a fleeting glimpse. Who here has felt this overwhelming sense of paranoia when playing Myst? I have. Myst is not a scary game, that much is extremely clear, but something about it strikes me with, like I said, this sense of paranoia, being all alone on a deserted island, solving all these puzzles and traps that were seemingly left for you, uncovering all of those actually really creepy video logs, the lack of any major music. I always felt like everything that happened on this mystical <laughs> Island was almost too painstakingly designed and calculated for no reason at all. I didn't feel like I was exploring. I felt like I was cleaning up the errors. Oh wait, I, I said errors, not mistakes. Oh, mistakes is a pun, but not errors, not what I fucking said. Left behind from this murderous supervillain or something. It just felt so devilish and intently evil to me. Every time I booted the game up and saw this familiar first screen, I never trusted Mist. I felt like someone was always behind me, like someone was surveying me on my every turn, like someone had specifically put me here like a rat in a cage, and thinking about it too hard really rubbed me the wrong way. Okay, a horror game was bound to show up in my personal list of games that got onto my skin, but who would have expected this? That was a close one. A second late, you would have fit nicely into a sandwich. Well, she found it funny at least. One of my favorite horror games ever made, and that list is another video for another Halloween, the Resident Evil remake on GameCube, and most recently the HD remaster, is that one remake that told other remakes to never fucking bother again. But we all know the story by now, so why have I put it here? The great thing the remake does perfectly, above everything else, is the subtlety of everything, and I mean everything. Yes, it has its occasional jump scares, but why are those scares so memorable and effective? Because of the juxtaposition and contrast of the subtlety of absolutely everything else. Lisa Trevor wouldn't have meant anything if the characters knew about her from the start of the game. The Crimson Heads would mean nothing if their original zombie forms didn't lie there for hours, waiting randomly to spring back up again. The atmospheric noises and groans would mean nothing if the visuals didn't work in tangent with them with the extremely subtle light flares and kinetic details in the pre-rendered backgrounds. The spiders would mean nothing if they weren't completely still and docile, moving only slightly every so often. Even the dogs jumping in through the windows would mean nothing if they just copied it from the original. Instead, tricking the audience by snapping the windows first time you go down the corridors and then having them leap through randomly later. The level of detail and subtle crafting is what makes the remake get right under my skin, despite playing the game multiple times and knowing the layout and the design of the mansion inside out. It's beautiful. Another non-horror game coming up, but like I said, one that really got under my skin the first time I played it, Fallout 3. Again, not a scary game, I'd argue, but creepy, unsettling, and so goddamn empty that every enemy you encounter feels like an event, and every monster you encounter feels like you could die at that very moment. Basically, from the second you leave the vault in the intro and see the desolate wasteland beam into existence as your eyes slowly adjust to the sun, the game throws everything and anything it can at you to get under your skin. Stuff like, I don't know, an isolated town that almost 
almost act like nothing went wrong on the outside until it turns out after being eerily nice to you, they're actually incestuous cannibals that try to devour you. Or an abandoned school festering with thick grime and thuggish bandits hiding and waiting to let you know that you aren't welcome. Or even being told to go to a specific place, which, as it turns out, is only accessible through the dark, dank, cavernous underground railway system, where many nests of unknown things lie in wait to rip you to pieces in the toilets. You see that down there? Yeah, how does that make you feel? That pretty much sums up what playing Fallout 3 is like. Like, you don't want to go down there. You don't know what is down there. But you kind of have to go down there. Whether you like it or not. Call me pathetic or whatever, but when I was much, much younger and played this for the first time, I actually had to take breaks every few hours to stop feeling so tense when playing Fallout 3. Fear of the undiscovered and the unknown is strong in Fallout 3, and the fact that you're pretty much required to explore all of it is what really made me feel odd, yet just great. <laughs> Who's up for some Lovecraftian bollocks? Oh god, um, not literally, um, I mean, he's dead, so that might be a little bit dusty. Call of Cthulhu, another one of my favourite horror games ever made, is yet another game that really got under my damn skin. It starts off incredibly slowly, but it's all intentional. What begins as a pacing and plodding murder mystery gets more and more suspiciously off-putting the closer you get to solving it. Then, once you figure out where the pieces fit, it turns out you aren't even playing a murder mystery anymore. You're instead uncovering a nightmarish occultist conspiracy involving rituals transforming residents and a grotesque creature from the Black Lagoon hybrid, and literally everyone you've ever met in the game is in on this, apart from you. And like an in-joke that I don't get, I don't like not being part of a nightmarish occultist conspiracy because I find it rather rude. If you want a game that makes you feel truly unsettled and uncomfortable just from the way the NPCs talk to you, stare at you, poke around corners you shouldn't be at, and not only acting suspiciously but passive-aggressively, Call of Cthulhu was made for you. Because not only does it make you feel clueless, stupid, and freaked out to the point of wanting to just give up and go outside and who wants to do that? But the way the town of Innsmouth makes you feel internally from an auditory, visual, and contextual aspect really fucking crept in and rummaged under my skin. Picture this, you're a survivor and you are alone. A lone survivor, if you will. <laughs> and you don't have a clue what is going on, what caused the world to suddenly bugger over, or what that thing is. Much like Silent Hill, Lone Survivor manages to create that feeling of complete helplessness and keeping your mind endlessly lost, which contributes mostly to the fear factor itself, fucked up imagery and gorgeously creative and messed up sound design aside. And the great thing about Lone Survivor, it accomplishes this not only in 2D, but in pixelated 2D. A feat I thought not possible until I touched this game for the first time on PS Vita in the dead of the night and with a good pair of headphones. The vague plot, hellish level design, and traditional survival horror aspects like low supplies and save points are, I think, brilliant enough to give any Silent Hill fan a good time, but the main thing that makes Lone Survivor truly get under my skin is the unpredictability of it all. No matter how many times I replay this game, I always get shocked at least once by either the way something sounds, the way something looks, or more often than not, what the fuck goes on in the darkness. Despite the lack of multiple three-dimensional directions, the way Lone Survivor makes you feel about dark surrounding you from only two directions is just skin crawling, especially considering the incredible sound design, some of my favourite in any game ever made. Which makes not only the darkness, but even the way the enemies move once they spot you absolutely spine tingling. Another one to creep you out to hell and back, and with the added bonus of being portable, Lone Survivor truly makes you feel like its namesake. What do I enjoy? Micromanaging, multitasking, strategizing, experimenting, and surviving. Am I very good at it? Well, no. And that's why I put Don't Starve at number five. I remember playing Don't Starve for the first time and expecting not much at all. I loved the music, I loved the art style, I thought it was adorable, and then- I didn't get any food or shelter fast enough and I literally shat myself! Look at this! My god! Being stuck in the dark in Don't Starve is one of the most depressing, humiliating, and freakiest things I've ever experienced in gaming. And what makes it worse is the fact I'm literally the worst player of Don't Starve in the known universe. There's too much stuff to worry about, too much stuff to consider and plan around. And this wouldn't be anywhere near as bad if you weren't so defenseless at the start of the game, at least. I mean, at the beginning of the game, you're about as vulnerable as this pebble.
The learning curve for this game is steep, because just to survive one night, you need to learn how to strategically salvage things, craft things, create food and shelter, keep a fire going. It's basically like real life wilderness survival, and I'm not very good at it at all, so this game really gets under my skin. Every time I start a new round, I get unbearably nervous, because I know fucking up and dying from an unknown scary thing is inevitable. It's just a question of when, and it's always from something I was not prepared to deal with or figure out how to approach it for the next time I try. For a game with everything out to get you, it really isn't beginner friendly. Everything will get you. And the way that you learn that, not from a warning, but from when you personally experience your first ever pitch black night completely alone only to hear some unknown thing on a total random place on the screen growling and striding slowly towards you, is the moment that you realise that you won't be getting home anytime soon. And that feeling is too much for me in a game that I am absolutely terrible at. Too stressy, too creepy, too much to get under my skin. Oh look, another horror game in a video about games that get under my skin, what a shock. And one that is, yet again, one of my favourites ever made, Eternal Darkness Sanitas Requiem on the GameCube. This game gets under your skin unlike any other on this list, because if it's revolutionary but over talked about and patented yet never used again, so why don't you just give up and kill yourself, direct fourth wall breaking game mechanics. I won't talk any more in depth about something that has been done to death, but it's so, so true. All of the sanity effects in this game get me every time. Even though I know they're coming up, and I know what they do, the atmosphere alone in this game makes you temporarily forget all of that. And you you know, when you see your head explode, you laugh it off and remember, oh yeah, the sanity effects lol. But then when the game pauses and directs itself to your save data to then proceed to delete it, even if you know it's coming for a split second, you believe it. Because this is one of the most manipulative games out there. It actively fucks with you once you touch the controller, and it only does it when you're at your most drawn into the atmosphere, when your character's sanity is at its lowest from messing up in fights and stuff. When you're at your most invested and vulnerable, worried that you'll die and panicking to avoid enemies, then it strikes you with, your game is corrupt! did Oops! That is why I always have a mini heart attack. And then after a few seconds I remember, it's just a sanity effect, but still the initial shock is enough. So in that sense, this game really does literally get under my skin. It affects me internally unlike any other on this list. And you feel like a bitch slapped weakling every time it happens. Coming up to the top three now, and yet we have another game which I would not class as horror whatsoever. So you can relax now, don't worry but only slightly. It may surprise you to know that Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty got right under my skin. I mean, yeah, the stealth can be tense, but that's pretty much it. I hear you cry. How can you be affected by something as silly as this? It's, it's like, it's, it's like, it's like, it's like being in a nightmare you can't wake up from. This is one of my favorite Metal Gear games ever made for all the themes it tackles and how it weaves its way into the real world like eternal darkness. But the thing is, you never see it coming because it hits you with a certain revelation in the last fifth of the game that changes the entire experience into one of the most what the fuck pieces of art I've ever played through. And the fact it happens in a stealth game like Metal Gear and not a horror game makes it all the more shocking when it hits you unexpectedly. I'll try not to spoil too much, but basically from the second you begin, the whole game literally plays you like a fiddle. It doesn't only play the main character right like a fiddle, but also wriggles its sorry ass into the real world and fiddles you like a player. Oh, wait a second. Plays you like a fiddle. I apologize for that error. Fake glitches, fake game overs, fake codec conversations asking you to shut the game off in the most robotically aggressive way possible with Campbell turning into a skull is bad enough. And of course, Kojima keeping up this charade of who you actually play as in the game that reflects the entire point that the game tries to make, fucking ingenious. But also from a plot standpoint, the last parts of this game are so meta that if you go in to replay it, the entire game turns into this creepy exercise of figuring out what's real, what's fake, what means what, when you're being watched, and your perspective of the way you play the game totally totally changes by a horrifying angle. It gets under your skin, and unlike Eternal Darkness, not in a ha-ha <laughs> fooled you kind of way, but more in a everything you've ever done in your life meant fucking nothing kind of way that honestly makes me debate adding horror as another layer or genre to this game that's already overflowing with genres and layers as it is. It really was that disturbing to me once I figured out what was going on, and I must admit, it ruins my innocent badass stealth fun approach when I play it again, turning it instead into a dark pseudo reflection of my life, gaming culture, human nature, just everything. It's bloody clever and bloody damn unnerving.
I have never felt so disconcerted in a game unlike PT, aka Playable Teaser, on PS4. Yes, Konami is Konami, and Konami are the worst, and not only is the game this teased, Silent Hills, never going to happen, but PT has also been removed from the PlayStation Store forever for people to never play again. I guess this must mean the value of my PS4 has gone up by a millionfold. Hey, hey. Speaking of, yeah, Silent Hill is creepy and I love the games and everything, but they never really got under my skin, as it were. More caught me off guard and philosophically screwed with me. But PT, holy shit, this game. It's short, yes, it's a tease that has nothing to do with Silent Hill, yes, but it's also one of the most damn prettiest and damn scariest 45 minutes of a free gaming experience I've ever played through. Okay, maybe not the scariest, but for such a short game to get that much under my skin and make me worried sick about what was going on, yes, that must account for something. I've already done a video on PT, so I'll be lazy and ask you to just click on the screen to watch it now, or like in the top line of description, whatever. And also, for those wondering about my opinions on Allison Road, it looks good, very promising, but the lack of any hint of story at this point really puts me off. I mean, I know it's still a concept right now, so I'm not expecting anything solid, but so far, scary stuff happening for the sake of scary stuff, I find extremely uninteresting at this point. At least with the vagueness of PT, there were bits and pieces of a plot that added some kind of stomach churning theorizing and actual depth to the scares, making them all the more scarier when you think about how how they all fit. Context, it's very important. Even in a 45 minute free game that has nothing to do with the game, it teases and exists as its own entity. But Allison Road has no context right now, so until it does, I'm not entirely sold. But hey, it does look very damn good. I'll keep my eye on it for sure. Okay, I'm ready for it. Get ready for the groans. I know it's a cliche, but the game that got the most under my skin personally was Amnesia The Dark Descent. Yes, I might as well have made a top 10 horror games list and stuck this at the top because I have no imagination whatsoever, but seriously, not only has another game never scared me as much, but also never made me cringe and get under my skin as much as Amnesia. It's been done to death, it's been let's play to death, covered to death, there's not much more I can say, but this is yet another one of my favourite horror games ever made for a reason. The way you go more insane and increase the tension and trippy shit the more you look at the monsters or stay in the darkness works as a beautiful mechanic, purely because you have to decide which is the lesser evil, staying in the light but keeping yourself massively visible to the horrifically violent and unpredictable lurking creatures, or not looking at the thing that's chasing you, but not being able to see what is going to happen, when it will happen, or if indeed you are at all safe to hide or safe to move on. And it's the sanity effects that do this. Add in all of the logic puzzles, finding object puzzles, ordering puzzles and switch puzzles, then throw those in while being chased to your death without being able to fight back, then throw that in with the limited lamp oil to not only guide your way but combat your sanity level on the fly, and you have the quintessential first first person survival horror game in a bloody dank and horrible castle with dungeons and not much light to begin with. And one that got under my skin so much that when I was 16 playing this game for the first time, I was worried about getting a drink from the kitchen in the dark for a few days after I played it. Not even joking, my hands are up, I'm not going to pretend I wasn't scared because I was. And here we are ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this video. We're not back in the real world yet, but we're, we're close. We're getting there. Please comment below on all of the games that have got under your skin. Not the scariest, just the ones that got under your skin the most. And until next time, if it's your birthday today or watching this video, happy freaking birthday to you. And please remember to stay beautiful. There's somebody at the door. 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 Since it's still the month of terror, are you feeling spooky? Well, how about going into the description to the Pixel Empire and picking up this limited edition Dead Space print? And you can get this and many other designs on the site from movies, TV shows, and games for 15% off of anything that you want if you use the coupon code CADDY in big capital letters. That's my treat to you for watching this video today. Thank you so much. Also, they ship internationally, and these bundles of limited edition designs are on a half price off sale right now. So go and go and go. <laughs> And hello again everybody, thanks for watching this video. Head to the description to find not only Pixel Empire, but my Games Grabber collection, where you can see what equipment I use to make my videos, and what games I'm buying and playing right this second. And click on the screen for any more random videos that you want to see. Um, also, if it's your birthday day watching this video, happy frickin' birthday to you, and please remember to stay beautiful. At the start, at least, you're pretty much defenseless. Oh god, I'm holding this. It's alright, isn't it? Well, no, because then they... Oh right, okay, yeah. yeah. Ruin the illusion. Okay, right.
Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are. Not quite in the wheel. <laughs> in the wheel world. <laughs> Where's Derek and Cora when you need him? <laughs> Not to get possessed. <laughs> to what, get molested? To, to get possessed. Oh, possessed. So I don't think anyone would want to molest him, would they? 